Hi, I'm Dr. Wendy and I'm an ophthalmologist based in Kuching and a mother of three. Welcome back to the channel. I like to make videos about my life as an eye doctor in Malaysia and I like to share tips and tricks and advices that can help you become an ophthalmologist in Malaysia as well. So, uh, if you're serious about becoming an ophthalmologist in Malaysia, uh, get serious about it and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell button because you do not want to miss any of these master related series that I have going on for you. Someone of you asked me to do this video. So here it goes. In this week's video, I'll be giving you an overview of what is the external paper all about, what external paper that is recognized in Malaysia, the whole overview journey of what the parallel pathway is uh, roughly going to be like. Lah. So because as you know, I'm a master's student, so I don't really have a personal experience going through this. This is based on what I personally see my colleagues and my seniors and the other people went through. Lah. So get excited about it and let's start the video. So before I start, uh, please kindly read this disclaimer. Uh, my sources are from the MSO article as well as the Royal College of Ophthalmology official website. I am in no way an official representative from the Ministry of Health. I am not somewhat official. Any new updates that I have not touched about, please kindly share it in the comments down below and share it with all your friends and don't kiasu. Huh? <laughs> as you may have known in my very first episode, the first episode in this master related series, I have mentioned that there are currently two main pathways that you can take to become a broad certified ophthalmologist in Malaysia. One is through the master pathway, which is more conventional, I would say, and one is through the parallel pathway. Number one, what is external pathway? So you need to pass the external paper for you to be enrolled, apply to join the parallel pathway to be recognized by the Ministry of Health. Paper, pathway, Ministry of Health, board certified. To me, parallel pathway or the external paper pathway is why is it called external? Because basically it is the exam is done externally lah, over the seal. The cut the back around my salary. So <laughs> The only external paper that is recognized in Malaysia is the FRC of the Fellowship of Royal College of Ophthalmology UK. The rest of your ophthalmology paper, those are not recognized in Malaysia. However, if you want to take them on your own leisure time in order to add more names and papers and credentials to the back of your chart, then you may do so. La. So in contrast, master pathway is the internal pathway. La. I suppose <laughs> it means that the exam is done internally. So if you want to learn more about the more conventional master pathway, definitely check out this video after this video. <laughs> so what are the exams in the FRC of Tao? Uh, I think there are three main examinations just like master pathway. Number one, you have the part one, which consists of basic sciences of in ophthalmology. And part two is actually a refractive uh, certificate. So their part one and refractive certificate is exactly like part one master of ophthalmology. And their part two paper consists of two parts. One is written, which is the theory, and the other one is the viva or the clinical. The same as part two master of ophthalmology. Lah. In fact, master of ophthalmology, there are part three, which consists of the thesis viva defense, which is not a requirement to be a fellowship in the FRC of the. What if you fail the part 2 FRC of Tao examination? Well, just like in master program, you have a maximum duration of 7 years to pass it. <laughs> it's okay if you fail, you can apply to take it again as long as you pass it within the 7 year uh, maximum limit period duration. Numbers of attempts are of course according to the FRC regulation. Do you have to do poster presentation, free oral paper presentation, collect merit points or to do a thesis paper presentation just like your master counterpart? Yes, I believe it is part of your annual review paper as according to FRC of South regulations in order to achieve your certificate of complete training, CCT they call it, as per UK system. So actually all your examination is actually based on the UK one. We are here just to... Not we la. <laughs> Not me la. So basically everything that you are doing is actually as per the UK system. The Ministry of Health is here just to uh, supervise and monitor your training to make sure you are competent. La. Because if you have already passed your part one, part two paper in the UK, you are actually quite you actually deemed competent clinically already. What are the criteria to get enrolled into the parallel pathway number one? You will have to already pass your part one FRC opt out and your refractive certificate. On top of that, you have to pass your basic science examination or the medics examination as well. So if you want to learn more about medics examination, I have 
just write the video for you. Uh, what is it about? Uh, how is the exam structure? What are the syllabus? Everything is covered in that video. So you need to pass that paper first. So by the way, this is just to remind you that the Master and Para Pathway application is now open for 2022 slash 2023 intake. Chop chop! Closing is 28th of February 2022, which is in a week's time that this video is gonna be out. So hurry up! Chupa chupa now, go and get ready all your documents and all your recommendation letter, whatever that you need. And uh, I wish you good luck. So now, let's say you have got into the para pathway. So what to expect now? First of all, congratulations. It's not easy to get in. So now for the first and the second year of your parallel pathway, you will be uh, placed in the level 2 accredited hospital for your training. To me, it's just like the year 1 and year 2 master pathway. To me, it's the same. Lah. And during this time, you can start preparing for your theory as well as your clinical part 2 exam. Lah. So unlike your master colleague, for them when they're drawing first year and second year, they still need to prepare for their part 1 exam. Where else for you guys, when you're in year 1 and year 2, you have already passed your reflection as well as your part 1 paper because that is one of the criteria. Let's say you're very heba, you're very chang'e and you have passed on your own your part 2 examination. So what happens next? In your third and fourth year, you can now already join the rotation to the subspecialty training. Every 4 to 6 months or so, you are expected to be rotated in hospitals which are accredited to be a sub-specialist training center to expose you to all the sub-specialty uh, training. Let's say for example, uh, pediatric, then maybe you will go to the hospital Tungku Amina, the, the one next to the HKL one. You maybe you have to do about four to six month rotation just to get yourself exposed to the pediatric ophthalmology. Let's say for cornea, they may post you to hospital Sungai Bulu to get yourself exposed there. In the third and the fourth year, be prepared to go around or changing around hospitals just to train yourself up lah. And once you have done that, after the fourth year, you will then join the gazetteman to be a gazetter of pharmacology in Malaysia. The difference between your gazetteman and the master's um, training gazetteman is that your gazetteman will last for a whole 36 years. 36 years. Oh. Hey, blah, blah. <laughs> 36 months. <laughs> so, <laughs> The difference between your gazetment and the master training gazetment is that your gazetment will last for a whole 18 months which is 1.5 years where all the master training gazetment will only be about 6 months ending a good appraisal report. But just like the timeline of a master program, at the end of your second year, you will already be, let's say everything goes well, huh? can already be a sport certified ophthalmologist practicing in Malaysia. Congratulations. you claim for your courses and the examination fee? Yeah. Unfortunately, no lah. So, they repeat, yeah? So, are you bonded in this parallel pathway? Nope. Fortunately, no, nope, because everything you send repay ma, so you're actually not bothered, which is a good thing. The regulation and the criteria may change over the years in the future. I don't know, you have to check the official website to get more information. But as of now, the candidate that I've recently asked, they say that they're not bonded. you are paying for your own exam, la, your own courses, la, your own hotel and your own conferences, why do you have to be trained under the MOH, under the parallel pathway? Well, it's a very good question. The reason you need to be registered under the MOH, under parallel pathway is number one, is to help to facilitate you in your sub-specialty rotation, let's say, because otherwise you are, if you are only stationed in one hospital and let's say the hospital, the hospital has only one sub-specialty training, let's say glaucoma, then you are not adequately exposed to other sub-specialty as opposed to the master training students, we are in the university hospitals and there are a lot of uh, subspecialties uh, consultants there. If you don't want to be enrolled in the parallel pathway, then fine, but you cannot work in Malaysia lah, as an ophthalmologist. So yes. And one good thing about enrolling yourself in the parallel pathway is that you are eligible to apply for your conference leave, lah, your unrecorded study leave and your exam leave. If you are not in the parallel pathway, yeah, then you have to toll out your own annual leaves, you know, to take all this exam, join the courses. But if you're in the parallel pathway, you are considered a student, a part-time student still, even though you're paying all by yourself, at least the leave, huh, the annual leave, very precious, you know. So I think it's still a good thing. Lah. Otherwise, you'll be spending way too many of your annual leave just to prepare for your exam, to go for the exam and to attend courses and conferences. Correct or not? After you finish your gazetment, basically, which means that you will be paid the specialist salaries 18 months, about one year later than your master counterpart. However, don't take this as a negative merit lah, because because it will it will mean that uh, by the time you finish your gazetment 18 months, you will have a whole lump sum of money coming in for you. 
Huh? Think of it as the government helping you to save already. Otherwise, you take your specialist money sooner, uh, then you will spend uh, on this and that, this and that, this and that, then everything will be backdated from the day you start your gazettement. So don't worry, you will still be paid whatever you are supposed to be paid. Don't worry about that. As long as you need to pass your gazettement. So once you get your backdated salary, you can blend Jamie coffee. Eh? This is the most commonly asked question. If I get my FRC after part one, does it mean that my chances of getting into master is less? Because some of, even though you have your FRC after, you may still want to join the master program. And uh, this is actually one of the biggest misconceptions as explained by Dr. Aziz Husni in this paper up here, here, which I'm going to link it for you to read. He said, he said, uh, any advice for those considering master and FRC after, those who cannot decide uh, one master or one FRC off, he said that this there is a false perception that taking the FRC off exam will decrease their chances of getting a seat in the master program. As a matter of fact, I personally feel that the part one FRC mm -hmm. off gives you an edge. What, what talking? I'm talking to the camera. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> gives you an edge, he said. My advice is not to hesitate in taking the FRC exam as the ministry will support the candidate. So the ministry is actually very welcoming of anyone who wants to be an ophthalmologist in Malaysia because this is a service to the people, to the society, to the nation. So if you want to join the master program, welcome, welcome. Please do go and join the master program. If you want to join the parallel pathway, also go and join the parallel pathway as long as you decide to be an ophthalmologist in Malaysia or any other specialty in Malaysia also, I would really advise, strongly urge you or recommend advice to be a specialist in the field that you have chosen. So yes, that is just briefly what an external paper pathway is gonna be like or look like for you. I hope in this video I will give you a bird eye overview of what the external or parallel pathway is gonna be like. So if you're one of those candidates who still can't decide whether you want to join the master pathway or the parallel pathway in my future next video, I will be comparing the master as well as the parallel pathway side by side based on my own personal opinion and remember to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Yeah, next video. Bye. What's that? I don't know. Frank Wright. Frank Wright?